Nvidia's typical plan for releasing gaming GPUs is generally releasing the next-gen series every other year. This has been the company's norm for many years, but Nvidia has never exceeded the two years gap since 2010, and instead we have actually seen the company reducing the time span for the older generation cards. This time, it's totally different because Nvidia has understood that gamers don't buy anything you throw at them, and this can be one of the reasons why Nvidia would want to delay the next-gen cards, aka RTX 5000 GPUs, to exceed its standard time gap of two years. Years. This is confirmed by the latest roadmap shared by the company itself and has been reported by Hardware Lux. In this roadmap, you can see that Nvidia has listed Ada Lovelace next to launch in 2025, which is going to replace the existing Ada cards, aka RTX 4000 GPUs. Nvidia usually names the next gen cards in their roadmaps like this, but this is not the final name for RTX 5000 GPUs. According to some rumors, Nvidia may call it Blackwell, but it is not confirmed yet, as we have seen in the previous leaks that Blackwell might end up being the architect architectural name for professional GPUs. One thing to note here is that many have misunderstood this roadmap thinking that RTX 5000 cards are delayed by one year, but if you analyze the roadmap carefully, the delay is not even close to one year. Here you can see that Ada Lovelace is placed just before the year 2023 because RTX 4000 cards were actually launched in the final quarter of 2022. Similarly, Nvidia has launched the previous gen cards including the Ampere and Turing families in the last quarter of 2018 and 2020. So technically, if Nvidia planned the RTX 5000 launch according to its norm, it would have been the Q4 of 2024 and that would mean the Ada Lovelace next should be placed just before the end of 2025. Similarly, if the next gen cards are actually planned to launch one year later, you would have seen it placed just before 2026. But the fact that it is placed just after 2025 means that the RTX 5000 cards are supposedly launching in Q1 of 2025, which is just 3-4 to four months away from their regular launch dates. It could be possible that Nvidia might launch it at the end of March 2025, but this still means that the launch is delayed by just 5 months at max and this is far from the titles we are seeing on different websites that suggest a 1 year gap. Whatever the case is, the fact that RTX 5000 cards are delayed makes sense because RTX 4000 cards are not selling well and Nvidia still has a good number of Ampere cards in their stock. This would give Nvidia enough time to not only prepare for the next gen cards but also for preparing more RTX 4D GPUs that might include the Super Series. If you are a hardware enthusiast and want to keep up with all the latest hardware news, leaks and analysis, then this is the right place for you. On this channel, I cover the most interesting stories right after their breakout and all you need to do is click on the subscribe button so you never miss any stories again. Next, we have another huge update for Intel Arc GPU users. If you watched my previous video, I covered how the latest bug fix on the Linux system improved Arc GPU's performance by up to 10%. Now, if you are a Windows user, then this one is for you. Recently, Intel released a beta driver 4514, which promises significant performance uplifts in several titles, including Deathloop, which saw an 8 and 10% performance boost at 1440p and 1080p respectively. F122 will also see a good 36% uplift at 1080p and 20% uplift at 1440p, but the Assassin's Creed Unity will see a whopping 313% uplift at 1440p and 271% at 1080p on very high settings. Now, it might seem too much exaggerated that a driver update can provide three times the performance boost in a game, but this is actually because Assassin's Creed Unity was one of the games that didn't get official support for the ARC GPUs as it is a 9-year-old title. But the fact that Intel is fixing its drivers to make sure older games work at full potential potential is the best thing about ARC GPUs. Not only that, but many newer titles are consistently getting more and more performance boosts in every few weeks as Intel is actively working on its drivers. And surprisingly, this has made the ARC A750 and the A770 competitors to the latest gen GPUs from Nvidia and AMD. If you have watched the latest RTX 4060 review from Gamers Nexus, you will find out that in several titles, the A750 and the A770 come very close to the performance of the RX 7600 and the RTX 4060. Considering that the A750 costs much lower than the 4060, it is now actually looking like a decent card for budget gaming builds. Of course, not every game likes the ARC GPUs, but the Intel driver update history tells us that it is not far from now when we will actually see Intel GPUs giving head-to-head -head competition to AMD and Nvidia. 
And lastly, the rumors about Intel cancelling Meteor Lake CPUs for the desktop might be history. If you remember, several reports previously indicated that Meteor Lake is only coming to laptops, but a recent leak by Foronix says otherwise. Foronix just discovered that the latest Linux 6.5 kernel now includes the Intel Meteor Lake S patch, which clearly indicates that it will support Intel Meteor Lake S CPUs. This once again has raised the question of whether the old reports for Meteor Lake getting cancelled for desktop are true or not. Furthermore, we still don't have the official announcement from Intel relating to this matter and we might have to wait for some more time before this information gets confirmed by Intel itself or by at least a reliable source. If this comes true then we have to deal with all the confusing naming conventions Intel has introduced for the Meteor Lake family. And in this video you will see what are the big changes Intel has made for the next gen CPUs. Watch the video and let me know your thoughts about this in the comments below. Lastly subscribe for more videos like these and I will see you in the next one.